At Listen Up, we care about what you think. Pop by our website and answer our question this week. How are you preparing for pandemic? We're at listenuptv.com. Listen Up is back looking at pandemic preparedness. Like any seasonal flu, H1N1 can cause death. That's why Canada's public health officials advise all Canadians to be vaccinated for H1N1, a flu shot that didn't arrive soon enough for all. This is Perry Cherneski, Reverend Perry Cherneski. He was the 32nd Canadian to die with H1N1 virus in his blood. Before he got sick, he was your average healthy, middle-aged husband and father. His first symptoms were a cough, the chills, a fever. He said he, would, he was tired, he would wake up exhausted in the morning. Um, his cough got cold, uh, wetter and deeper, and at that point we were concerned that maybe he had pneumonia. Perry Cherneski was only 42 when the H1N1 virus rampaged through his body. He loved his music, loved his wife and kids, and loved the Oak Bank Manitoba Church he led as pastor. Just days after he was diagnosed with H1N1, he was gone. He had no other health issues. He was fine. He was active. He liked to play hockey. He ran around with the kids. He loved to play with the youth. He. Um, he was healthy, he was fine. But Perry Cherneski was one who lived with the spiritual awareness that life is a precious gift, that each day can be your last. He was admitted to hospital on Father's Day 2009. Hours earlier here at Oak Bank Baptist Church, he preached the last sermon he would ever deliver, a message targeted to fathers in the congregation. He left them with this thought. So anytime your wife, anytime your children leave the house, say I love you. Perry went into the ministry because he just loved Jesus. And he just felt that he wanted to proclaim God's word. He wanted to share God's love with many people. And it just seemed like a natural calling with his openness and his, his fun-loving attitude and his humor and his, just his willingness to embrace people where they, where they were at. He never made people feel uncomfortable. Um, he could go into a room full of strangers and he would make everybody feel comfortable. He always had something to say to people. Um, he always made them feel loved. And when did you start to realize something was wrong? He was very tired and very sick. I remember him coming home and I said to him, Sweetie, just why don't you go lie down? Maybe after a good rest you'll feel better. And I went downstairs to be with the kids and just give him space to go upstairs and rest. And I came back upstairs, I can't remember for what reason, to get a drink or something. And he was sitting on the couch. And I said, what's wrong? And he said, Claude, I, I can't get comfortable. I'm sweaty, I ache all over, I just feel awful. And I said, okay, we're taking you to the hospital. At that point, I just thought this was getting worse, his cough was getting deeper. Now he had aches and chills, and we thought it was pneumonia. So at that point, we took him to the hospital. And so you took him to hospital right away. What happened? The first night passes and they take his blood work and they want to see if it's H1N1 and he gets worse. He starts coughing up blood and stuff. Um, at that point they figure it would be better for him if they put him in ICU and intubate him and that way he, his lungs could get a rest because he hadn't been sleeping. He was running a fever. They couldn't get the fever under control and so they moved him into ICU, they intubated him, they put him under, and then um, they basically they queued up his tests to see if he actually was positive for H1N1 or not. Because at that point the labs were so backed up they didn't know and they said that there would be a couple of weeks wait time, but right away when they put him into ICU they made sure to queue up his tests so that they could find out within the next 24 hours if he was positive or not. Perry was positive, and in 14 days, H1N1 took his life. The very last day was Saturday. He had taken a turn for worse Friday night, and we had got a call, and his whole family came in. They flew in. Um, <clears throat> I remember the nurse just telling us, 
you know, don't even touch his hand anymore. Don't, you know, like don't hold his hand anymore. Don't, don't disturb him in any way. He needs to save all his energy to fight this flu, every last little bit. Like I, I used to stroke his hair out of his face and just talk to him and they said, don't do that. Don't, in any way, don't disturb him. Don't, we don't want him at all being awakened or aroused in any way. He needs all the energy he could possibly have to fight this flu. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it, I kind of wondered, you know, it crosses your mind. They say a turn for the worse. I mean, how much worse can it get? But you think, no, again, you just, you live in this denial. You don't think it's going to happen. He was only 42 years old. He was only 42 years old. He is definitely with the Lord. I know that. I envy him because I know he's, he's walking those streets. He's probably playing his guitar. <laughs> Why are you so sure Perry is in heaven? His amazing faith in the Lord and the amazing promises in the Bible, because Jesus promised that those who believe in him will not perish but have an ever everlasting life. He said anybody who comes to him, he won't cast out. He promised that he died for our sin, that we don't have to be worried, that we don't have to be enemies of God. And that's how I know. You just come to him. You come where you're at. You come just who you are, where you're at. It doesn't matter what kind of weaknesses you have. It doesn't matter what kind of problems you have. Jesus will meet you there. Everybody can die. Everybody will die. It's just a matter of time. You need to be prepared. That's the sermon Perry preached too. Be prepared, you know, because you never know when it's going to happen. What is your advice for us? First of all, don't be paranoid. Perry was sick as early as Friday, we know that for sure. He performed a wedding on Saturday. He performed the church service on Sunday. So he exposed probably 300 some odd people to H1N1 and nobody got sick. He exposed his family. We didn't get sick. So, you know, don't be overly paranoid. Wash your hands, keep things clean, but don't be afraid to live. The other advice I would give people is, like I said, be prepared because this life is short, very short and it can be an over in an instant. When Listen Up returns, my conclusion on how to prepare for the end of a life you never want to lose. <laughs>